I'd like to take you through a complete product shoot from planning, setup, the shoot, post-processing, and finally publishing on the web. So let's get started. Now, a lot of you being photographers are probably a lot like me, where you'll get an idea in your mind for a photo and then you'll obsess over it until you can capture it. And that's what happened to me on this pen. So let's take a look at what I have in mind to capture this in camera. Okay, let's plan out what I have in my head for this image. So we'll start with the pen. It's going to be smack in the middle. I have the clip showing the logo there. And we'll have a horizon line back there. And the reflection of the pen on a shiny black surface. So this whole surface will be just quite completely black. Maybe with a little reflection from the background. And the rest of the image will be just the background with uh, basically a vignette, a darkened area, all around this edge here. And with a lighter gray area right around the pen. So not that much to it. And I want the... Now this pen has to look silvery, so I think it's helpful to have one side brighter than the other. And this is all going to be side lit. And so let's show you what I wrote from before. And so this is going to be a black shiny table. The pen will be suspended above it. And then we'll have a soft box on the left and a reflector on the right. So the light on the left will be quite a bit brighter than the light on the right. And there should be a dark stripe down the middle of the pen. Camera will be back here. Here's a backdrop made of foam core, which I will light using another strobe down here. Probably on the floor facing up. And so that will be the whole setup. So now let's build the setup and take a look at uh, what I built. Now let's take a look at the setup. And obviously here's the camera, 5D Mark II with a 70 to 200 lens at 200 millimeters. And here's our table. This is actually a piano bench which made a really nice shiny black surface. There's our pen suspended from these monofilament lines. You can see there a little bit. And that's just a simple rig I put together to suspend those monofilament lines. Here's the soft box. Right? And it's driven by an Alien Bees B800 has no trigger on it, but it has an optical trigger which is being triggered by this, the 430EX Canon strobe, which is driven by this uh, Radio Popper Junior X. And so that will trigger this Alien Bees. And here's the backdrop that will provide our background. And here's the other reflector that will provide the dimmer side of the pen. And that's our setup. All right, I'm all set to take the shot. And the pen is all set and it's not rocking right now. It took a while to settle that down. So I got my remote. I'll do a test fire of the strobes. Okay, that seems to work. All right, and now I'll focus on the pen using live view. Uh, and uh, zoom in here. This is a way I almost always focus uh, when the camera's on the tripod and the scene isn't moving. So it lets you really nail that focus in. All right. Turn off live view and now I'm ready to take the shot. Well, this photo is looking pretty close to my vision, but there's, we've got a problem here. Look at that clip with the logo on it. It's completely in shadow. Now this is a product photo, so we really have to be showing off the logo of the brand of the product. So let's try this again. So to fix the logo problem, I added a strobe. Not sure if you can see it, but I added a strobe right in front of the camera. And it's pointing straight up and it's flagged to prevent glare going into the camera lens. And I'm just going to use this piece of, uh, it's actually matte board, uh, at an angle to reflect light into the uh, logo. 
So let's give that a try. So it has to be at a pretty low angle because um, the uh, the pen clip is almost face on to the camera. So let's try this. It looks like we've got a good bright logo on the pen. I've imported the shot into Lightroom, so let's edit it. So first let's remove the uh, lens distortion right there by clicking Enable Profile Corrections and it automatically chose the right lens and camera. And the Chromatic Aberration, which is bound to be with this high contrast and object. And so now I'm going to correct things like the contrast, well increase the contrast. Now this uh, area here is pretty blown out, so let's reduce the highlights, bring that back in, maybe bump up the shadows, and you can see a bunch of junk on there that's really hard to get rid of, and that's part of what I wanted to cover. Okay, now let's uh, look back here, and I think the exposure can go up a bit, uh, maybe not that much. Actually, since there is a risk of blowing out here, I have to be really careful, and then the whites a bit, bump up the blacks, and one thing I like to do to really make the blacks pop is take this tone curve and reduce the shadows, but just the very bottom of the shadows. Let me bump this part up a bit, Let's see how it looks close up. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now let's get rid of some of the junk here, but not all of it because it's just kind of a pain. We'll just get rid of the really big pieces here. There's one strangely on the edge there, and Lightroom misaligned it. Let's get it in the right spot. And let's see, any other major pieces of junk on here? Now, before the shoot, I did brush this, but it just shows you that this is really hard to get rid of completely. But since we're taking this into uh, Photoshop, that won't be a problem. Okay, so that's what I'll do as far as the junk's concerned. Let's take a quick look at the background. Uh, I see some sensor dust here, so let's take care of that real quick. Okay, uh, now let's make sure this is framed properly. Let's get this right smack in the middle, and we'll make sure that it's not rotated at all. By just bringing up the lens correction and hold, holding the mouse over, and that looks pretty straight. Everything looks nice and straight. Okay, so. Let's take care of things like the background vignette and the monofilament lines in Photoshop, and also the junk. So now the image is in Photoshop, so let's first take care of these monofilament lines. Now the first part of this should be pretty easy, I'll just go to the lasso tool and just draw a line around it, but not near the pen. I'll bring up Content Aware Fill and just get rid of it. Do this other one. Now, we get to the tougher part of this, because we have to do it close to the pen now, which really isn't that easy. Uh, let's, let's trim off a little more of this. this side. And this. <clears throat> I'm trying to make it big enough to cover the sort of this glow around it. Okay, now let's get a little more detailed here. Now I'm going to try, and I don't think this will work that well, just using Content Aware Fill to get rid of this this way. And that's actually not too bad. I had to fix that border, so let me try the same thing here. Okay, sort of a little warts there. But let's get rid of the rest of it. Start with this side and just see how it does. Not too bad. It's kind of amazing. It's doing better than I expected it would. Not bad at all. So let's fix up these little warts here, and I'm going to use the clone tool for that, which you can get at with S. So I'll set a point here, 
And I think I'll make it bigger. And just match up the border. Go a little ways there. Do it again here. Match up the border again. And just keep doing that until you get a nice match here. There. Okay, do the same thing here. Grab a source image. Make it line up real nice. Grab it from down here. And let's just smooth the last little bit out. Okay. Not too bad. You can see a little bit of distortion there, but I don't want to take too much time in this video. Now the next thing is to take care of some of the junk here, and it's a little easier to use the healing tool, which is J, uh, J with that little thing there, that little loop on it. And that way we can just click on it and very quickly get rid of it. Okay, so that one I'm just going to use the clone tool, so it'll pick up the right kind of area. There we go. Now I'm going to cover this part too. Now this is, I can just do the same process here, but let's try a different way. What I'm going to do is bring up, let's see, under noise, go for median. And notice what it does, it really smooths things out, and of course it makes certain things look ridiculous. Uh, let's set it to maybe radius of 3, sharpen things up, try 2. Okay, now we're starting to see the noise back, so I'll make it 3. Okay, but first I'll copy this layer. And then once again, do noise, median, 3. And what I'll do is I'll put in a layer mask, click that, and I'll fill it with black is currently the foreground color. And so now, just look for smooth areas with a lot of dirt and start brushing white. Whoa, that is a big brush. Start brushing white into those areas to make the smoother version show through. So you see that? It's a little easier. And just have to make sure we're not overdoing it. But that way we can just get rid of huge areas of junk very easily. So that one piece of junk stayed, but that's okay. We'll just get rid of it another way. Okay, the image is all cleaned up now. All the blacks are totally black. All the little bits of dust are gone. Little scratches are gone. And so now, let's uh, put in that vignette. So let's look at the whole thing. I found the easiest way to do this is to use the lens correction tool, but we need a little preparation first. I'll convert this background to a real layer. And then I'm going to turn this into a square image. So it's 5616 high, so I'll make it 5616 wide. Now we have transparent pixels and a square image. And then I need a new layer and filled with white. And now we'll use the lens correction tool, the custom tab. And right here I can put in a vignette. I'll just max it out. Bring in the midpoint. So that looks about right. Say OK. OK, so now that layer is filled, but now we need to overlay it onto the actual photo. So let's set the blending mode to multiply. So that'll just darken it where it needs to be darkened. And now I'll reshape the vignette to perfectly match the original photo. Now for this to work, you need uh, snap turned on. OK, so now it matches perfectly. Now let's hit Enter. I'll hit Command and click that layer. So now just those pixels are selected. And if I do Crop, we're back to our original uh, aspect ratio. And now we've got this vignette around it. Problem is, this vignette goes all the way down here. And this is the reason I'm doing it in Photoshop, not uh, Lightroom, so I can alter this vignette. I need the vignette to apply up here at the top, but not down here at the bottom. So let's apply a layer mask to the vignette. Use the gradient tool, and we'll do white at the top to make the vignette show through, and black at the bottom to make it hidden. So I'll do it this way. Hold the shift key down to keep it straight. There. 
I need a little more clearance around the top of the pen so I'm going to use a very big and very soft brush and I'm going to paint a little area of black here to hide the uh, vignette. So just be very careful. Switch to black. There. Okay, so that should do it for the vignette. I'll flatten the image, save it, which will put it back into Lightroom. And now if we switch back to Lightroom, there's our Photoshop image. So let's, let's prepare it for the web. Let's export. And I want this to be a JPEG. So let's go down the list here. So the first thing is JPEG format. Uh, 60 seems fair. sRGB. Now I need it to fit a certain size. So the first thing I'll do is the final size. I want it to be 768 pixels tall by 512 pixels wide. And I want to sharpen it at high sharpening. So then I'll export. But I also want a retina image. So that's double the horizontal and vertical resolution. So we'll do the same thing, but this time 1024 by 1536 pixels tall. And we'll export that. And we'll use a unique name. And so those are our two images for the web. Here's the photo on a website you can visit with a link in the description. This isn't a real website and the links here don't even go anywhere, but it's just to demonstrate this photo in use. If you visit the site on a Retina device, like an iPad or one of the new MacBook Pros, it uses a double resolution image that looks a lot better, using a technique I described in a recent video that I'll also link to. So I hope you learned a few things from this and enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. <music>